All right, so we've done a bit of excavation to the board, well, to the amp in general, because we've uh, disconnected this board. This is actually uh, not too bad a model to work on in terms of access to the to the board. There's only a couple of connections you've got to um, disconnect. Some of them are connectors as well, so you can just pop them off. There's only a few wires that you need to desolder in order to angle the board up and then carefully uh, remove the standoffs and lift her up for access to the bottom. Now I've removed the main filter caps, well the two reservoir caps that are in series and the uh, the next node after that which was the 30 microfarad 500 volt there and you can see that's all the way through the board. I'll flip it over in a sec, there we go. Alright, so that is the damage to the bottom side where you can see that the burn has made its way all the way through and cut traces. So that was a 2 watt resistor, but to burn that bad it would have had to have had significantly more than 2 watts, uh, trying, trying to dissipate more than 2 watts and couldn't do it. So I decided to heat up and took out some neighbouring components as well. Uh, this area the damage isn't so bad but it's a bit of a mystery what happened here I I don't think that's just the, the trace heating the board up and doing that damage it looked like there was metal deposited there and I assumed that was from um, the little film cap a little film cap above it um, but once I cleaned all the carbon -y black crap off it it actually looks fine. It looked like it blew the crap out of the bottom, bottom of it, but maybe it's the other way around. There was some contamination on the board, and that's actually sizzled and then uh, splashed up and hit the uh, bottom of the cap. It looked like the cap blew its ass out. So, so that is just a well. You can tell why they don't use fusible resistors because in Mesa Boogies, the traces of the fuses see how thin they are. Uh, so that resistor. So let's let's run you through just having a look at the schematic. Of course, I'm not open at the right page. Uh, so, the start of the power supply, we've got that there is the 2 watt resistor that was blown out. Um, you've got the, the uh, standby coming in here, that's the rectifiers, there's actually three rectifiers on this model. Uh, that's the two uh, reservoir caps there in series before the standby. And then it comes through, it's got a small suppression cap there, probably an attempt to um, stop popping from the switch. you got the choke, and then it goes to your first first uh, filter cap, your B node there. So A is for the plates, or the output transformer, and then the plates, and B is for the screen supply. C is your phase inverter and a few other things. I think the reverb driver as well. And then D and E and the preamp nodes. Uh, so the 2.7K 2 watt was burnt to a crisp and the 15K there was burnt to a crisp. The 22K was okay. So that means the short that occurred was somewhere on the D node. Now, at 394 volts, let's say 400 volts, round it up, um, if you had a dead short valve, uh, 12AX7, um, then the plate resistor would have softened the blow. So you've got a 220k there, you've got 100k throughout, that's the D node there. So even if the valve was a dead short or anything after that resistor, that only equates to about or less than 2 watts of dissipation. Now they're 1 watt resistors, um, so that may have done it, but it looks a bit more violent than that. Um, it could be the case, but so initially I thought maybe it's one of those filter caps because if one of those two there goes short well then you've just got well only 15k 2.7k between 471 volts and, and ground and that would be quite dramatic but I'm not sure exactly if that's what's happened um, it could have just been sustained short in the preamp and then it's uh, it's just heated those resistors up they've kept going just heating 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 until they've uh, finally caught fire and because they're not flame proof they've just burnt away and sustained a flame and then created a carbon cloud of crap on the board and then that's conducted as well and it's just been sort of a runaway effect so 
I'm running with that. I think that's what's happened. Uh, so the other the other stupid thing on this amp is you've got these little orange relays everywhere. You've got the orange caps as well. They say Messer on them. They're not Messer. They just print them. They don't make caps. Um, but you've also got these little uh, relays all over the board, um, and they're doing various switching throughout. Um, you know, bells and whistles amp. There's a million things you can switch on this thing. So you've got little relays uh, all over the shop switching various things and that particular is that one there no this this little one down here so that's connected to the plate side of the 100k resistor on that valve there these relays it says the specs there you can make out 0.6 amp 110 volts dc so that's that's the maximum voltage rating it can handle 0.6 amps at the max voltage rating of 110 volts dc at the maximum current rating, two amps, it can handle 30 volts DC, so it's the other way around. Now that's DC at AC, because it's easier to break an AC current, because uh, it's you know fluctuating, when it passes zero, it extinguishes any arc. DC is harder to do that, so you find that you'll often have to derate significantly for switching DC as opposed to AC. Uh, so at 125 volts AC, it can take one amp. So its highest well, power rating, I guess you could say, is in AC. So what they've done here, connected directly to valve 2A, which is also on the D node. They've got 277 volts DC uh, going straight to that relay. Now, sure, it's low current, but that is... A well, significantly, almost, well, doubling the, um, more than doubling the voltage rating of the, the relay. So, it's just a ticking time bomb, everything in these amps. Um, they just ignore ratings, left, right, and center. You've got diodes down there that heat up like crazy, cook the board. They are powering the... DC rectifiers to try and get the hum lower. You can see the crusty solder connections there, so I'm going to cut them out, replace them as well, and lift them off the board a bit so they've got a bit of airflow and possibly even put some higher rated ones in there. Uh, and we've just got to go through and see if we can cut out areas of the board. Um, we're going to have to come up with some fancy footwork in terms of uh, mounting this stuff on the uh, destructed board because. If we put high voltage in those areas, it's probably going to start another arc within the board because of the carbon, the the the, uh, the chemical makeup of the board is now so degraded that it's probably going to become conductive and, and cause problems as well. So we have to cut out every last trace of that stuff and mount some stuff flying above the board, possibly. Um, I've heard other guys actually cutting little bits of fiberglass and, and epoxying them in, which is another option. I'll see if I can get away with just mounting stuff in the air, sort of point to point style. It's not that big an area. There's only a few compromised connections. So if we can cut out most of that stuff and just, just fly a few components in the air, secure them properly, do some nice, nice splicing. We might be able to get away without major, major surgery on this thing. Uh, and then we'll fire it up and see what other issues it has. I'm suspect of that relay too because uh, that is connected to that node um, but having said that one of the valves where is it that one that one looks different to all the others um, you can see there's a bit of metallic deposition there below the mica or between the mica washers uh, and the bottom looks blackened in the center there and the pins have a funny funny sort of look to them they, it looks like uh, looks like there might have been some arcing happening there uh, so yeah I don't think that valve's healthy so it could have been the valve too but yeah just running those relays over, over voltage is just asking for a failure but you know I mean it doesn't happen every day so I guess that's good enough <laughs> Anyway, I'll keep you updated on the progress, and I think we've got enough to throw a, well, a bit of pricing together for the customer, and maybe just have a bit of a margin there in case we need to chase a few rabbits down holes after 
after we get the thing up and running again. So I'll keep you posted.